How's it going? This is Brian, and it's reaching the end of April. Hopefully everyone's being safe out there. Uh, I'm still working. I never got laid off or anything, but hopefully everyone's doing okay. I got asked to do a uh, cleaning and disassembly of this uh, Panzer AR-12 Pro. So I'm gonna do it real quick. Um, also, I did get a bunch of my Black Magics that came in finally, but I, don't, I haven't had time to go to the range to shoot these, but uh, I'm gonna make a little video whenever we get a uh, chance to get up there. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna get right to the point here with this. Uh, get this out of here. Okay, so I got my whole table cleared off except for just what I need, except for my uh, Glock 21 over here. That's gonna stay right there. Um, the instruction booklet that comes with it shows you everything that there is. I know the lighting in here, the sun is so bright, it's coming through the window, but anyways, the uh, manual shows you everything there is, and if you don't have the manual, then you can actually um, go online, and I'll put the link in the, um, in the description, but there's the website, let's see if I can get the camera to pick this up, that's too bright, I think, so, uh, it's that GoPro and it doesn't like this, anyways, the description is on the panzerarms.com.tr AR-12 Pro. I'll link it up in there. It shows you all the um, manual is laid out in PDF form, and you can print it if you don't have the actual manual that came with it. But this is the same thing that's actually in the manual. It just says AR-12 Pro Panzer Arms Full Metal and it shows you all the same instructions. I just printed this at 150% size so that I could see it easier. And I'm gonna use the description of what they call each piece because they, like the uh, front shroud, they call it the um, muzzle. So I'm just gonna call it by what they call it to keep it less confusing. I printed up just the instructions here. This is unofficial video, I don't work for any of them. People ask me to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. But uh, make sure that you look through your manual for your own gun. And um, when you get up to the instructions here, it's, uh, it basically tells you about unloading the shotgun. It shows you the little diagram for the pieces, the same thing that I have on here. And you can read all this stuff with the disassembly instructions. Basically gives you a disclaimer that if you uh, incorrectly repair or put use aftermarket pieces and they void their warranty, that's just like pretty much everything else. And then it gives you a little safety tips. But we're just going to go through the steps that they have on here. I'm going to do it off of this papers though because it's easier to see. It's the same exact thing that's in that book. You can get it right off their website. Like I said, it's, uh, it's www.panzerarms.com.tr. AR-12 Pro, and I'll link it up in the description. I know it's hard to see with that sun glaring in here through this window, but anyways, let's go ahead and begin this. And like I said, I haven't had time to go take it up, so it's still clean from the last time I used it. But the next time I go up to do try those black magics out, I'm going to um, have to do this again anyways. But anyways, so I got the 10 round mag. I have no ammunition on this table whatsoever. All the ammunition's gone. I don't clean anything. This is loaded and it's completely safe, pointed in the safe direction. That's gonna stay there, that Glock 21. And since 45 doesn't fit very well on a 12 gauge, there is no 12 gauge ammo on this table whatsoever. I don't like to do any cleaning or disassembly like this with any of the ammo. See, the mag is empty, chamber's empty. Anyways, the cleaning tools, I've got the factory rods that came with it. I'm gonna use that. This is the um, brush and the mop that came with it in the box, <clears throat> came with this gun. I also got one of those boar snakes, which I really like these. This is for 12 gauge. I have a, a small pipe wrench, just in case I need it for those nuts couple brushes, a nylon and a brass, a small punch. The This is the wrench that they give you with the kit, the barrel wrench. I have this Torx 10, that's for the sight to take that off. I have this screwdriver, that is for the sights to take that off, and then a small hammer if I need it for this punch. But anyways, let's go. This is the uh, cleaning stuff that I use, but I don't recommend anything. You can use whatever you want. 
that I just like to quick scrub and this this is some uh, one shot it's basically like a dry lube and then of course this uh, Lucas oil but I'm not recommending anything this is completely unofficial if you want to go watch some videos I think there might be some on their website you can take a look this is just the way I do it it's completely for entertainment only you can do it however you want but I'm gonna go off through the step-by-step -step just how they have it here on, on their actual uh, instructions and I call it by the names that they have here to the pieces so don't blame me if you think that that's a stupid name for whatever they have all right I'm gonna take off the uh, let's begin this is completely unloaded magazines unloaded there is no 12 gauge ammo here whatsoever so start with that there's no way that this thing is going to get loaded accidentally nothing is here like I said this is loaded with 45s it's not going to fit in here so there's nothing here that could get make this get loaded all right start with that now step number one there's this little disclaimer about if you replace the parts you're responsible blah 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 it's saying to remove the magazine we already have the magazines removed unscrew the barrel shroud by turning in the direction of the arrow okay so let's go to that unscrew the barrel shroud just unscrews I don't know let me see if I can get this in the camera better just unscrew that Right, that comes off. You can see it's got um, some self-locking divots in here. I don't know if you can see it on there. That's how that holds on there. They call this the barrel shroud or muzzle on the, on the uh, parts diagram. It says muzzle. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. Try to keep everything organized when you take these things apart too. Let me move these cleaning supplies over. All right, I'm going to put that there. And then, of course, we can take the... Uh, your uh, strap hook and then the front piece which is called let's see they call it the uh, the forearm plug that's the little piece that goes in front and you can see which side needs to go up against that uh, muzzle piece because it's already scratched up from being locked into it and then here's your little hook which basically just goes in there like this when you put it back together I don't know if you can see this or not. I don't have. I only have the GoPro, so I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend like I have professional recording equipment. All right, I'm going to set all this over here out of the way. All right, then it says remove the magazine cap with a wrench. Well, unfortunately, there is no uh, there is no um, piece there that they're talking about. So you just slide this off. And this, let's see, what do they call this? They call it the forearm. Here's your piece right here. Here's your forearm piece. All right. I'm going to take the sights off just so they don't get damaged. These are the ones that came with it, the flip-ups. So let's take these off. Just using a screwdriver. All right. Slide it off. I'm just going to stick the screw back in here just so I don't lose it. Here's the front sight. Here's your forearm. Move that out of the way. Here is your back sight. It's on the screen. That's why I don't like leaving that open like that, like they suggest to. <clears throat> That's why I always keep my fingers clear of that. But anyways, let's take this out. Slide this back in here. All right. Now, let's go to this. I don't know what the step three, remove the magazine cap with a wrench. There is no magazine cap there with a the wrench, so I don't know what they're talking about. Must have been on a different revision. Okay, move on to the second page. <clears throat> you have to pull the four in forward direction, uh, gas chamber fixing, turn the direction of the arrow. So now you're basically loosening up the gas chamber fixing. So, this is why you might need to have a pipe wrench for the first time to loosen this up. So let's go ahead and, uh, I just put it on here, just, just trying to damage everything. Oh, it's tightening. Let's go this way. There. 
crack that open. That's why I said use a little pipe wrench or whatever you have, but this will hopefully keep it from getting too damaged over the time of taking it apart. And you can take this all the way off. You have to unscrew it through both of these threads. Okay. And then you can see it has the uh, markings, which is the bottom, obviously the self-locking. I'm going to set that down over here. And then this sleeve is going to be the same thing. Okay. Take that off. Right, and then that slides off the rest of the way. And then you can take a look at your uh, ring on there and make sure everything's clean. Nice. So I'll set this off to the side. Okay, let's go back to their instructions here. Remove the piston by pulling in the upward direction. We did that. <clears throat> Turn in the direction of the arrow with a wrench. That's the barrel nut. So here's their little tool, it just hooks in there. I don't know if you're gonna get this or not, but. There you go. Unscrew that. It just unscrews quite a ways here. Okay, it's off now. It's just a spring putting tension on it. All right, I'm gonna take the sight off here. Uh, wrong screwdriver. And this is a Torx 10 for this uh, SIG one, but whatever site you have. It's up to you if you want to take it off or not. I don't like putting chemicals on it. It can damage the optics. I don't know if they'll even cover it if you damage the optics with like a quick scrub. I'm going to set that off to the side. Okay, now, according to their next step, get the barrel wrench, pull the cocking handle off. That's basically just pulling this out. Pull this cocking handle out. Sometimes it's easier to take a little bit of tension off of it. If you push this down a little bit, you can take a little bit of the tension off and you can see that it helps line it up. If you hold this down just a touch, you can pull this right back out. It just has a groove in here that lines up. I don't know if I'm showing it. Yeah, there's a little piece on there that needs to be lined up, this little tab. That's pretty much all there is to it. And if you see how are you going to put it back together, you have to uh, put a little tension on it. Take the little tension off the spring and you can just pop this right back in like that. It just sits in there. That's it. Okay, so you pull that out. And then they want you to pull the pins out of the body. So that's where you might need the punch. I got a little oil on there, so it shouldn't be too hard. I just take the punch and push the pin out. Here's the bottom. And this pin is for the front. And if you need to, you can take that little hammer and help tap this through. But just don't beat on it. It should come out fairly easy. Just like that. There. Whatever you need to do to get them to come through. I got a little oil on there. Keep them oiled up to make it easier so they don't get dry. But anyways, there's your uh, your two pins holding the bodies together. We'll go to the next step. This is according to, I'm doing this by their instructions. Obviously I do it faster and a different way, but I'm doing it the way they do it because I'm not showing you any of the tricks that I have. Okay, detach the upper from lower. <clears throat> so basically just take these apart like this. Now you have your lower. This, as far as I'm concerned, you don't really have to do much to it. You can just make sure there's no debris in there, clean it and oil it as you desire. So, I mean, this is pretty much straightforward. I don't know, there's nothing to really see in here. All I do is just spray a little bit of a uh, quick scrub in there and blow it out and make sure this should stay fairly clean though for the most part. I mean, you can take and clean out your, um, your magazine area 
But anyways, let's get on to the next step here. Okay, so now it's saying to pull out the barrel, basically. And uh, let's see, slide forward, just like that. And then what do we have for the next step? That's as far as it goes. It's as far as they want you to take it apart, just like this. Which only takes a couple minutes if you're not trying to describe every single step of what you got. And then it basically, let's see, I'm going to read this right from their, this is an instruction booklet, it's on their website. <clears throat> it says, disassemble your shotgun, disassembled, using a proper cleaning rod, run a solvent wet patch through the barrel, or through the bore several times. This will then be followed by running dry patches through the bore to remove any debris. I don't use all that stuff, I just use the brush, the mop, the bore snake, some quick scrub and whatever, but this is what they're recommending. If the bore is leaded to the extent that the above patch cleaning procedure did not remove the lead, then scrub the full length bore with a solvent wetted brass bristle brush. Then, or when the leading is loose, then repeat step number two. The surface of the bolt carrier ejector and inside surface of the receiver should be coated very lightly with non-penetrating lubricating oil. That would be something like this whatever you decide to use. Reassemble the shotgun and wipe the exterior metal surfaces sparingly with an oiled cloth. Swab the bore with an oily patch before storing the firearm. Place the shotgun in a safe, locked and stored space where unauthorized persons cannot access the firearm. Never store the shotgun in the leather case, as leather attracts. Well, the same thing with those foam-filled cases. It'll soak the uh, It'll soak up all the oil and dry this out, stuff out and it make it easier for it to corrode. Anyways, that's everything that they have in their instructions. So what do I do at this point? Well, with the lower, you really don't have to do anything. You can spray it out with some quick scrub if you need to. Spray it out and make sure that you get inside the magazine area. You can use your brush, you can use your mop, whatever. Clean this out, just make sure there's no debris in there pretty straightforward. This is pretty much self-explanatory for that. As far as the uh, where your gas port's at, you can probably use your nylon brush or uh, brass brush, whatever you have. Clean this up. Make sure all your threads are clean when you go to put this back together. Clean all this up. If you need to use brass, you'll see wherever you guys have dirt and residue build up clean all this you know you can pretty much see what you need to clean and what you don't need to clean so you just use your quick scrub clean out pretty much whatever you need to clean brush it wipe it down I mean you pretty much can be the judge of what you think needs to be cleaned as far as this goes you can see all the surfaces. I mean, there's nobody that can tell you but yourself. If you want to just hurry up and clean it and throw it back together, go for it. If you want to take your time and and actually scrub everything down, then go for it too. I can't tell you what is your level of cleanliness. Wipe everything down. Okay. And then with the uh, dry lube, pretty much spray it down real quick because this is going to dry up anyways. Okay, got that. Kind of like help it out a little bit here. Okay, that's pretty much cleaned up right there. I'm going to set this down. Make sure that your uh, sleeve here I don't know what they, they call they call it the gas hole, but whatever. The piston, you know, clean this up. It's you can pretty much see when it's dirty or when it's clean. I mean, you just have to look at your level of what is clean to you. Clean this all up. As far as all your external pieces, you can use your brush or your mop or whatever and clean this stuff up. I mean, th this you can look inside and see what you need to do. If you need to clean it, then clean it. <clears throat> move this aside so I don't get it dirty. <clears throat> you can use 
use a brush or whatever you have available. <clears throat> this is the stuff that came with the shotgun itself, so. I can't really tell you where your shotgun's gonna be uh, stored or anything, but I wouldn't uh, over oil it if you're gonna put it away either because then you're gonna have to wipe all that crap off. If you got a heavy oil that you put on there, unless you plan on storing it for a long time. <clears throat> If you plan on using it every couple weeks or whatever, then you probably just want to keep the bare minimum amount of oil on it. Okay, so I got that, so now I can clean this up with, uh, use this uh, dry lube. Okay. And then we have the, the hand guard, same thing here. Okay, and let that dry. The magazine, if you need to take it apart to clean that out, just slide the piece off. And don't let that happen. <clears throat> Anyways, with these, you can just take and scrub them out. If you have a magazine cleaner, then a brush. I have one for pistols. I don't have one for a uh, shotgun this size or AR. I don't think. I might have one in that box actually. Just clean it out. This is the this is all the oil that they put in from the factory. If you can see it on here, I don't know if it's picking it up or not. They got it greased up from the factory like that. Put this back together. Nothing very complicated about these. fired uh, with these 10 rounders enough to have to worry about cleaning them up yet. Okay. It's not going in there. I just pop, push it over a little bit. Or not. Take a look and see what happens. magazine's pretty self-explanatory and that's pretty much it there's nothing else to really clean so <clears throat> I mean you oil these to taste obviously the piston the uh, your barrel so let's slap it back together just do everything in reverse order <clears throat> so we're gonna start with this everything's dry now just like a film with that with this dry lube or whatever dry lube you use it just turns into just like a um, just a layer, like a little film of oil on it. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and put this back together in the reverse order. So we have to put this back in, and then we're going to put the pieces together, the upper and the lower, starting with the front. And with this, I always put a little bit of lube on here, on these pins, just to make it easier to come back apart. So let's put that pin in. There, you can wipe off the extra oil off of there. That makes it easier though to take them apart so they don't get dry. And then we're going to put in the uh, back. that up just a little bit all right 
now. We're going to go backwards. And according to theirs, this is their instructions. <clears throat> the next step is going to be um, tightening up the barrel. This thing has already worked itself loose the first time, so after putting, this gun has 205 slugs through it so far, and it did come a little bit loose on here, which sucked because it started getting hot, so tighten this up, cool it pretty good. I mean, this is a pretty small wrench to begin with, so it's not like you're going to be able to crank it down too much with just a little bit of a grip that you have on there. <clears throat> so... I would crank it down pretty tight. It doesn't give you like a torque specification, it just says um, loosen it. So, there, that's tight. And then the next step is going to be put the piston back on, which goes on this way, and then tighten that up. Just let me not destroy this. Okay, that's actually reverse threaded too. Yeah, this is this is reverse threaded, just let you know. So right is uh, right is loosening on it, and left is tightening. So tighten that on. I'm just gonna just snug it with this pipe wrench. I don't want to damage anything, but it was on there pretty tight. So just give it a little just snug it up. All right, and then we have the locking nut for it. Make sure you put the surface back to the proper side. Okay, and this is standard thread, so right, it's righty tighty, lefty loosey for this one. Tighten that on. I'm gonna give it just a little snug on this. Not much. Okay, got that. So we're done with that. Don't want to damage anything here, but it was on there tighter than I could take off by hand. So okay, I'm gonna double check this barrel <clears throat> after messing with those on the end to make sure I didn't loosen it up. tiny little crank out of it okay so now we're back to here next step is gonna be they want you to put this handguard back on so I mean this is uh, pretty straightforward if you want to clean it out a little bit more I mean you can see through it pretty easily if you need to take and brush it out or whatever it's your personal preference spray it out with some quick scrub you can use the air compressor too which I, I didn't feel like firing out but if you want to just clean it up on the inside to your personal preferences on that, this should slide in there all the way down. Okay, and then the next step, according to their directions, is to put that magazine, whatever they have, some kind of a screw here, but this one doesn't have it. And then you're going to put your... Um, you're going to put your uh, lug back on. I'm going to keep scratching up the same side. I don't want to mess up the other side. And then make sure you got your uh, your uh, strap hook on there for your sling. So it basically just slides them together like this. That just slides in the end. And it fits right in there. And then you have your, I forgot what they call this thing. They call it the uh, muzzle, I think. <laughs> Oh, it's on here. I have no idea why you call it the muzzle. It's like a, it's like a heat shield or something. Let's see. <clears throat> they call it the muzzle. So that's what this is. So we're gonna put that over the end, and then this just tightens up by hand. 
crank it down. Okay, there. And then we got the uh, the handle to put in there, which we skipped over that step, but don't panic. Uh, you can either push this down. If this comes out, you can push this down. Uh, let's see, I don't want to scratch it up. All you have to do is take the tension off of here and you can put this back in. So let me take this off here again. somebody had to actually at the shooting range had that come out if you pay if you do all you have to do is take this down you can push this and take the tension off and it lines it right back up so I don't know if you can let me try to get it in the camera so what you end up with is it's locked in like this I don't know if you can see the groove isn't lined up so if you push this down I'm trying to look in the camera and do it at the same time if you push this down a little bit it actually lines it up for you all you have to do is take a little bit of tension off like this so take this handle and this you can just clean it up whatever you need to do just brush it a little bit with a um, nylon brush okay so you take a little tension off it lines itself right back up right here so then you can put the charging handle back in just snaps back right back in there there that's it <clears throat> Double check it before I put this back together. Now you know if this thing does. I seen somebody who had one a video up and they had this at the shooting range. It had this come out. So if it does, don't panic. Just push this down a little bit. It takes the tension off of it, so you can line it back up like this. I took that stupid rubber piece off of there because it wouldn't stay on anyways. That rubber cap that they put on there. So that's why it's just a metal. It had that big rubber cap that was over top of it. Anyways, okay, let's, now let's put this back together again. And make sure this is seated all the way before you tighten it up because I notice sometimes it doesn't quite line up right in the middle here. What you'll end up with is like a little bit of a gap. Yeah, so make sure this is like seated all the way down in there. All right, let's put this back together again. down together I'm trying to keep it in the camera view I just hand tighten this down good and tight okay all right there you have it now if you wanted to oil this down a little bit you can take a, a little bit of this dry lube you can spray it on and wipe it down. You see I got fingerprints and stuff all over it. After I put the sights back on, I'll take a little bit of a cloth. So the front sight is right here. Let's just put this back on. So just slide it to wherever you want to put it at. Hopefully I'm getting this in a video still. Just slide this back on. It's really windy outside right now. That's why you can hear all the noise in the background. So just put this wherever you want it at. If you need to put some Loctite on there, go right ahead and the screw before you put it together. Tighten that up. And then the back one. <clears throat> Goes on like this. Let's see if I can slide it on there. You can put this wherever you want. Out of the way. I don't like it hanging over too far so it doesn't break off if it gets hit. That's why I had it turned around before, just because I wasn't using it anyways, but I didn't want to leave it laying around in case I needed it. It doesn't really matter if you have it turned backwards or not. It will still be lined up either way. It just has the adjustments where you can see the notches on the back of it. So anyways, I just didn't want to leave it laying around in case I needed it. It was already on here. Okay, both of these work. Oh, actually, that one's sticking. 
these aren't the greatest sights. They are the ones that they give you in the in the box. Okay, and then my optic is going back on next. And that was right here in the middle. <clears throat> and where's that torque set? This one goes right here. Okay, and then I make sure everything's lined back up with this. Check the site on there. Oh yeah, that's everything's lined up together. I don't know. I couldn't show you see it on the video the last time when I tried to look through this. It's hard to it's hard to get it lined up perfectly with the red dot. Plus now I got the sun in my eyes and everything. But anyways, that's the full disassemble and assembly of this thing. So hopefully that helped anybody. There is a, a video on there for that for them. It's on their website. I'm gonna link it in the description so you can go look. It's in the owner's manual as well. And when you put these, when you push this magazines in, if, it, if it's a 10 rounder or the five rounders, make sure you don't jam it in like an AR. I had to get used to that as well. Cause it just clicks into place. I noticed that I was trying to slap these in and if you overshoot it, it will cause it to jam up. So what you want to do, you'll hear it click. Listen. There, it clicks in. That's as far as you want to go. What you can do is you can overshoot this which I just did on purpose. And it will cause, us, everything will get hung up in here and it's a pain in the butt to get this back out sometimes. If you slam this in like you do with the AR mags, you'll overshoot the um, catch. And it will actually, uh, it won't load. You'll end up overshooting it and everything will be pushed up to the top in here. And that's a problem too. So, that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, you could take and wipe it down on the outside if you, if you choose to. Uh, I can't think of anything else. As you can see, I did remove this uh, that riser piece off the back here a while ago because it uh, it wasn't going to stay locked in anyways. But it's just been a lot of fun. Only problem I had with it when we were shooting it the last couple times we took it out was the uh, when you overshoot the magazine. That's one thing that I find kind of weird. There's no stop at the top of here. So you have to push it in just till it clicks. I'm used to slapping in the AR mags as hard as I can and then it... It, if you do that with here, it's going to push it up too far and it actually will cause it to jam if you do that. And then it's a pain in the butt to pull the magazines back out. They get wedged in there too when you overshoot it. So just be gentle when you push these in. Just like that and it just clicks. But that's it. Hopefully that helps. It's unofficial. Um, I will link that, uh, that uh, website, the actual website on there. And you can go from there whether or not you uh, have a better way to do it. I found another way to take it apart faster, but it's, I mean, it's pretty much you have to go follow the steps, sort of. But don't be intimidated by this, uh, this charging handle piece either. If it does come out, which if you pull it back just a little bit and you pull on it, it at the same time it actually can find its way out, you can just push the spring down like I showed you. And then you can pop it back in, especially if you have to range or something and it comes out. Nothing's broke on it. It just, you, if you put it in the middle where it unlocks stage, you can actually pull it, pull it straight out. So, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think there's anything else I have to add. Like I said, if you want to uh, try to oil this up a little bit yourself just to make it look nicer, you can do that too. That's where this other oil, the heavy, a little bit heavier oil seems to do a little bit better for that because it'll stay on there, soak in a little bit. Just don't leave it too oiled up when you put it in your safe unless you plan on storing it for a while because you're going to actually um, have to wipe some of the extra oil off before you shoot it. Otherwise, it's going to attract dirt and wear things out even faster. So it's supposed to be just a little bit of a light oil on there unless you're storing it. And if you store it, do not put it in those foam cases. I've got the foam case I brought this out in. It will soak up all the um, oil off of the metal surfaces that are touching it. It will actually help it corrode a lot faster. So anyways.
I'm not trying to bore you anymore. It's just a 40 minute video. I was just trying to do this real quick. And that's pretty much it. So, um, if there's any other questions or anything else you want to see, I am going to take this up with a bunch of those. Uh, I have several boxes of these that came in finally. I just haven't had time to go shoot uh, to the range and shoot them yet. I'm going to make a video and see how they do in this because these should be a lot of fun. It's supposed to be some pretty heavy duty, heavy hitting um, slugs. So, I'm going to see how these actually do in here. And um, other than that, uh, I guess it'll be till next time. All right, hopefully this helps out anybody. Like I said, I'm going to link the description to their actual video. I don't know if I, they have a couple videos on there. I don't know what it what it has on there, but everything is on their website. If you do not have the original owner's manual, it's exactly the same thing that I just printed. It's on different pages because of, for some reason it when I uh, blew it up, it changed the page sign. Everything is in here, step by step. On what to do. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. Straightforward. I don't really like doing these things because everyone has their own little tips and tricks. And that's pretty much it though. But clean it to whatever you feel like is the cleanest level for you. I'm pretty picky and I like to have things really clean. So that's why it's maybe a little bit cleaner than somebody else would have it. That's pretty much it though for this. So hopefully that helped you out. If it did, then great. If not, then check out the website. I'm going to link it up for you. And um, I think that's pretty much it. All right. Have a good one and stay safe. And I will be making a black magic video for this, hopefully, when I get a chance to get to the range pretty soon. So anyways, all right.